So the program today is going to focus on our resources here um, in person at the Genealogy Center, and we'll also talk about how to best navigate some of our databases and our catalog to access materials that you can view from home as well. So I wanted to begin by um, providing a little bit of an overview about how the Genealogy Center can help you. And then we'll take a little bit deeper dive and look more closely at our resources. So all are welcome at the Genealogy Center, child to adult, beginner to experienced researcher. So if it's been a while since you've been here, or maybe you haven't used our resources before, we, we welcome, welcome you here, um, welcome you in person and virtually to, to dive into our resources. So um, starting with numbers, our collection contains over 1.3 million physical items and over 500 items are added each month. We now have 24 licensed databases and these are available on site when you visit the library. And there are a wide range from ancestry to find my past and my heritage to databases that focus on African-American genealogy, Jewish research, Swedish, and a lot more. So there's something for everyone there. And local history and genealogy periodicals are easy to find with Percy, our periodical source index, which we'll talk about a little later. And then also when you visit, you have the option to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a genealogy librarian. Um, so these are scheduled for 30 minutes and they're free and we can work with you to help analyze and work through your brick walls and suggest resources and um, strategies to, to use for some of those hard to find ancestors. So now we'll break it down a little bit further and talk more about our physical collections. And later on in the presentation, we'll move to digital collections. And I'm going to start here with family histories and city directories. So we have over 70,000 volumes just in family histories alone here in our physical space. And these can be located in the catalog by searching for a specific surname or by browsing through the shelves. And the books are organized alphabetically by surname. So they include families from all over North America, the British Isles and areas of Europe as well. And for some family histories that are out of copyright, we do have many that are available electronically through partnerships that we have with Internet Archive, for example. So these electronic resources are also linked in the catalog. We have one of the largest collections of poll and other city and town directories, which are helpful for locating information related to the addresses and occupations of your ancestors. And along with this collection, we have state blue books and manuals and many school and college yearbooks from all over the country. So next are military records, passenger lists, and naturalizations. And we have access to extensive indexes and images of passenger records through our licensed databases and through print sources. So our print sources include collections like Germans to America, Italians to America, among many others. And our collection of military records includes company, regimental, and division histories. We have some of the largest military databases available like Fold3, as well as our military heritage, which is a free database on our website that includes images of books, original letters and diaries, photographs, biographies, and you can also find some service and pension records there as well. So we'll look more at that database in a bit too. So. Moving to our United States local records, the Genealogy Center focuses on crafting a comprehensive collection of genealogy and local history publications. So we have more than 372,000 printed volumes containing the histories of towns and communities across the United States. And this can be anything from vital records to cemeteries, uh, cemetery records, church records, Portland and probate materials. So lineage society publications and yearbooks are also among the materials included. And next we'll mention our African-American records and resources. First, 
we'll mention our African American Gateway, which is a free database available from anywhere. The links to websites in the Gateway are paired with a bibliography of resources for African American research in the Genealogy Center collection. And we also have several licensed databases, including African American Heritage, as well as the African American Historical Serials Collection and several newspaper databases as well. We also um, have access to federal census slave schedules, Freedmen's Bureau records, and much more. And there's also a wide array of indigenous peoples records in our collection. You can browse the catalog to look for these specific materials. And we have the indigenous peoples of North America gateway database on our website. So like the African American Gateway, this one's also available from anywhere within our listing of free databases. And there's information on beginning your research there. You can also take a look at the microtext listing to view the records that we have on microfilm and microfiche related to Native American research. And you can view the collection bibliography and search there by tribe or by, by location to, to explore the list of, of materials that we that we have for that, that subject. The Genealogy Center also has a, um, a significant collection related to Canadian and British Isles research, as well as many other countries. Just within this presentation, we're not able to convey the depth of all of the collections. I just wanted to highlight portions so you can get a better idea of the scope. So for Canadian research, we have local histories, cemetery records, and many published French Canadian parish records. We also have access to all of the published or microfilm censuses from 1666 that are publicly available, Halifax and Quebec passenger lists, and Ontario birth, marriage, and death indexes, among other materials. We have a considerable collection of volumes from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales as well. We have a valuable selection of Irish materials in particular, so that includes things like the 1798 Rebellion Papers, Griffiths Valuation, and 19th century Irish census fragments. So our collections contain a diverse range of countries and ethnic groups, but I wanted to be sure to mention our German materials because they're also a substantial and popular portion of our collection. So. We have everything from guidebooks that provide information on getting started in German research to gazetteers, atlases, directories, local histories, periodicals, and much more. And a standout in our German collection are our Ortsippenbuch and Ortsfamilienbuch. So an Ortsippenbuch is a town lineage book and an Ortsfamilienbuch is a town family book. And these contain birth, marriage, and death information for all individuals listed in local records over a specific time period. So they're organized into family groups. And all of our materials are searchable in our catalog. So that'll offer you a better picture of the scope of our collection. And especially if you're looking for a specific area, specific region or, or town. So whether you're looking for German materials or looking for materials on Poland or France or any other country, the catalog will be a helpful place to visit to explore the um, depth of items that we hold. So next, I wanted to visit our website and show you where you can go to find some of the items hidden in our collection. So this is the main page of the site. And you can access it at genealogycenter.org. But before we get into the collection, I just wanted to point out a couple of things that you can find on the main, the main page. So up at the top left where the, where the arrow is pointing, that's where you can find links to our social media, our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, so we share tidbits from our collections there and updates about future programs and events that we have happening. And our YouTube channel is also linked there. So that's where you can find many of our previously recorded programs. And next, you'll see this link in the middle, have a question, click here to ask a genealogy librarian, and that'll take you to a page with our email address, phone number, and a contact form that you can submit. So if you, whether you have a question about a book in our collection, or you're not sure where to go next on a certain aspect of your research, we're happy to help. So don't hesitate to reach out to us there. 
And next is our menu at the top. So the home button will take you to the main page of the library's website. The About the Genealogy Center tab is a place to go to connect with us, plan your visit, and you can read about the librarians here at the Genealogy Center. The Genealogy Services tab contains links to help you get started, and it'll have links to quick search guides as well as links to our databases and other, other tools. The Programs and More section is another place where you can find previously recorded programs as well as our listing of upcoming programs. So you can register for any of those that catch your interest. And right below that is where you'll find the search bar that you can utilize to search our catalog. And we'll jump into that later. Sometimes Zoom cuts off the very bottom portion of the screen, but hopefully you can see the four colorful buttons. So there's one for resources, one for family history archives, and one for our services, and then the last one is uh, for planning your visit. So we'll explore our resources first. So when you click on that link, you're taken to a page that looks like this. And here you'll find an alphabetical list of our 24 databases. And you can peruse those alphabetically beginning up there at the top with Ancestry, or you can filter by database type, by demographic, or by title. So there are two types of databases, on-site and free databases. So a couple slides ago, we mentioned a couple of the free databases, the African-American Gateway and the Indigenous Peoples Gateway. So the free databases you can access from home or from anywhere. The on-site databases will include things like Ancestry, Find My Past, Fold3, newspapers.com, news newspaper archive, and a number of others. So those um, licensed ones can only be accessed when you're here in the building in the Genealogy Center. So if you're planning a visit, definitely take a look there and um, kind of make a list and see which might be uh, most beneficial to use while you're here researching. We're not able to go through all of our databases today, but just wanted to give you the, the full list so you can see all of them here. So we mentioned a few. There's several Jewish databases. There's Archive Digital, which is a Swedish database. A new one this year is My China Roots, which will be helpful if you're researching Chinese family history. So it contains millions of um, both Chinese and English language records that are relevant to Chinese communities in North America and, and Southeast Asia. And there are also several newspaper databases that we have access to. So all of this equals millions of records and something for everybody to dive into. So our free databases are next and these can be accessed for free from anywhere again. And the library and its volunteers have either put together or, re or received the free databases and you can search each one independently. So we'll talk about a couple of those today couple of key ones that you might want to plug into from home. So the first one is our microtext catalog, and that's a listing of the microfilm and microfiche that we have here at the Genealogy Center. And there are a few ways to search. You can search by locality, records, specialty records, ethnic records, and other. So if I search by locality, I could pick counties, and then I could choose my state and my area that way, or I could select international and search choosing my country of interest. Here I selected Germany. So we do have several items on microfilm. We have maps of the German Empire, Myers Gazetteer, passenger lists. Microfilm can still be a valuable tool for accessing some of these materials, especially things like smaller newspapers or items that haven't been digitized yet. So the next database that I wanted to talk about is our family Bible records page, and um, we'll also explore our family resources page. So the, the family Bible records section looks like this, and it has transcriptions and images from family Bibles that have been donated to the Genealogy Center. So you'll find first marriages and deaths there, as well as information from items that were found inserted in the Bibles, like newspaper clippings or photographs or funeral cards. So these are alphabetical by surname, and you can also use the search function there at the right to search for a specific surname or person. 
So here I clicked on the Anthony and Mary Penrose Wayne Family Bible, and there's information here provided about the, the um, history of the Bible, the publisher, when the library acquired it, 1994. So there at the bottom, you'll find links to the pages so you can explore the family information digitally, as well as the, the papers and letters that came along with it. This is what one of the pages looks like in that Bible. So you can hit the next and previous buttons to go back and forth and explore, or you can return there at the top and look at the other Bibles and explore the collections further. So this is our family resources section. The family resources section features family histories and family files that have been submitted um, by researchers who have given permission for their materials to be hosted on our website. So we always welcome additional contributions. And when you click on this database, you're taken to this landing page. So it's similar, organized alphabetically, so you can peruse that way. And this is the alphabetical listing for family histories a to E, and it's a similar setup to the Family Bible page. So we're going to look at the Allerton family history. So this work is focused on the descendants of Isaac Allerton and Mary Norris. And at the left, I get a picture of the cover photo. And then there is a clickable table of contents there. And also at the bottom, there's a search bar. So you can keyword search the contents of the book. A little tip is that it's best to enter just one keyword. So if you're looking maybe for somebody's name, we're going to use the example of Benjamin Pratt. I would just try typing in the last name Pratt, and then you could do a control F search on the results page for the first name of Benjamin. You can page through it, read through it in order like you would an ebook, hitting the next and previous buttons there to move back and forth. And there's also a printer friendly view at the top as well. So if I decide I want to use the search function to explore the text, I can do that. And this is what it'll look like. So I searched that last name of Pratt and I received all of these results and the pages are linked at the left. So, and then on the right hand column, I get a preview of what is going to be on the page. So I can sort through that way and see which pages I want to explore further. Moving to our next database, this one is called our Other States Resources um, database. So we also have an Indiana Resources database with a similar setup and these have a varied collection of materials and they're created by researchers who've donated their work to the Genealogy Center as well as Genealogy Center staff who've contributed to the collections. So as with our other databases, this one is always growing. So it's a good idea to check back and see what's new. So here on this one, we have general resources up at the top and resources from other countries. And then from there, it'll be alphabetical by state and county. And we have a variety of record types available. There are school records, yearbooks, cemetery records, and I'm going to explore a collection that we have. So we're going to look at the War of 1812 pensioners in Michigan. So this is what the collection page looks like. So there's a little bit of information here. It tells us where the information came from. And in this case, it's from the U.S. Pension Bureau's list of pensioners on the roll, January 1, 1883, Volume 4. And then there's a call number where you can find that here when you're in the Genealogy Center. So reading through this, we have some more information about what we can expect to find in the index, as well as that the original list of pensioners includes the pensioner's post office, the amount of their monthly pension, and for some, the date the pension was granted. So there's additional info that you can find in the actual book that won't be in the index, but the index is a it's a good starting point so you can see if if you can easily see if your ancestor is listed in there. So you have search bars at the bottom that allow you to search by first name and surname. And then at the right, there are some search tips to help you make the most of your searches. So there's fuzzy searching that allows you to search a string of characters. 
says, like it says, Smith would find Smith, Smithson, Aerosmith, exact searching only searches for the exact text and the sound X will search for the sound X equivalent. So searching for Smith would find Smith, Smythe, Schmidt, and so on. So those are a couple of search strategies that can help when you're exploring any of our free databases. And the next one here that we'll look at is our military heritage database. So this one we talked about a few slides ago, but it contains documents, photographs, letters, unit histories, and other items. So this collection of files has materials from the colonial era through the Afghanistan and Iraq wars. And here I clicked on the page for World War II as an example. So up at the top, you'll see a search box along with some specific suggestions for maximizing your searches within this database. And the collections are organized by type. So while this screenshot doesn't show the full web page, you can see some items here like biographies, burials, diaries. So one of the collections that I find kind of interesting is this Robert Kyle's photograph collection. So he was a photographer and a third class petty officer in the Navy. And you can keyword search his photographs here, or you can click on the blue links above the search bar to browse the collection. And this is a small preview of some of the photographs that you'll find. And when you click on them, you'll be able to see an image description. So we're almost to the end of our free databases. And before we get to our catalog and searching for materials there, I wanted to talk about our periodical source index. The Genealogy Center has one of the largest collections of genealogy and local history periodicals. We have thousands of current subscriptions. There are more than 10,000 titles in our collection and Percy has over 3 million searchable citations. So Percy is a subject index. It's not an every word index. It's valuable because you can track down things like church records, family Bible information, and a lot of other unique sources of genealogical information that might not be published elsewhere. Percy is accessible from our listing of free databases. So this is something that you can search from home. And this is the screen that you'll see when you click on the index. So there are a few ways you can start your search. You can search by surname, or you could search United States, Canada, the British Isles, or other countries. And if you have article title keywords, you can explore searching there as well. For the first example, I picked United States, and then I selected Ohio and Cuyahoga County. And then I receive a list of clickable categories, and then you'll have the number of articles that correspond to each category. So I had to chop it up to fit it on the screen here, but you can see some of the varied subject categories. So cemeteries, church records, vital records, photography, surnames. So there's a bunch here to explore. And for this example, I clicked on the obituaries category. And at first my results will be organized alphabetically, but there is a search box up there at the top where the arrow is pointing and you can use keywords and our keywords in there to further refine your results. And it's not pictured in this slide, but there are additional search boxes at the bottom. So you can also refine by keywords in the publisher date, periodical name, and article title columns. So if I was interested in a collection of Jewish obituaries, I might type that keyword into the search bar and then my results are automatically organized to reflect that search. So there's one a little bit further down the page that looks interesting. So that one is select Jewish obituaries, 1900 to 1906. So that's the title of my article. And then over at the right, you'll see that it was published by the Genealogical Society of Cleveland. The article appears in their periodical volume 11 issues three and four, and that was published in winter 1997. And then you'll see an ACPL call number. So that's the, the number that you would use if you're here um, to grab it off the shelves. And 
So we will go back to the main search page in Percy, and this time we'll explore other countries. When you do that, you'll receive a full list of countries that we have indexed, and we're going to click on Germany. And so I get a list of categories pertaining to Germany. So this time we're going to look at church records. And then if I just click on church records, I get a really long alphabetical list, but I put in a couple of keywords there, Baden and Catholic, to refine my results. So with Percy, it's always a good idea to play around with combinations of various keywords and spellings if you're looking for a name or if a, the spelling of a place has changed. So here I might be interested in the middle one. There's the article Catholics from Lorraine and Baden among first wave of Germans to Delhi. So this one we can see it comes from Delhi history. That's the name of the periodical. We can see the volume and issue and the call number that we would use to locate the book. So that's just a very small preview of searching in Percy. If you're interested in, in exploring a little bit further, the resources that the Percy can offer and some of the hidden gems that you can find there, we do have previously recorded programs on our YouTube channel that go into much greater detail about how to use Percy and make the most out of your searches. The next question that you might have is how can you request articles? So there's a couple of options. You can request them a lot of times directly from the publisher. You can request them from a local library if there's one near you that holds that particular periodical. And you can use WorldCat to search for the periodical and see which libraries closest to you hold it. And you can also request articles from us. For ordering from us, there's the order form there at the right. So it includes six articles. It's $7.50 plus 20 cents per page. So you can email that order form to us and we are happy to get those to you. If you come in person and you'd like to make traditional photocopies of the articles, you can do that. It's 10 cents a page or you can bring a flash drive and make scans of the articles for free. So moving on from Percy, heading back to the main page of our website, we have some valuable resources here in the Family History Archive section. So if we go to that page here, you'll see a little blurb. The Genealogy Center is active in several initiatives to make public domain portions of our collection available online. So this is done through several partnerships, including one with Family Search and Internet Archive. So both, both of those digital libraries are linked there. So if we click on Internet Archive, that'll take you right to our collection there. So you can see there at the left, we have over 120,000 books from our collection that have been digitized. And again, this is free to use from home or from wherever you are. So you can search the collection in the box there where the red arrow is pointing. You could search by surname if you're looking for a family history. You could search by place name or any other keywords that you have in mind. So at the left, there are filters that you can use to refine your search, including your published um, subject language, and there's a few more. So you can browse and read through any of the books that are of interest to you. And we'll talk a little bit about the catalog. Before we finish up, there are two search functions on our website. The search bar on the left will search the website and the search bar on the right has two functions. So in the little drop down there, you can see that it will search our catalog or you can set it to search our free databases. So for our first search in the catalog, I'm going to do a search for Cleveland. So when I do a search, it'll open up a new tab that looks like this. And I can see that my search retrieved just over 1300 results. And then at the left, you can narrow your search by using some of those filters like format, whether you're looking for a book, a periodical or microfilm. You can filter by subject, authors, publication date, 
And another feature that we have available in our catalog is the add to my list feature. There at the far right under where it says holdings, full, full display and place request, there's a little button that says add to my list. So when you're searching for books, maybe you're planning a visit, you can create a running list of books that you want to take a look at while you're here. And if you go up at the top under my account, there's my list. So once you've added a number of books to your list, you can click on that to view it. And then from this page, you can see all of the materials that you've compiled there. You can remove any items that you prefer not to keep on your list, or if you're finished with that when you've printed it off, you can delete it and start a new one maybe if you're working on another family line. At the right, you have some options and you can customize how your list will look. The default setting is brief bibliographic. There are also options for full bibliographic, Chicago Manual of Style, or APA. And you'll probably want to stick with brief bibliographic because it has all of the important information, author, title, call number. So that'll be the easiest most of the time to look at when you're when you're here and when you're looking for items to grab off the shelves. So you can, again, print it out or email it to yourself. And for the next example search, we're searching for the New York Genealogical and Biographical Record. And when we search for that, there are several indexes and related items available for this periodical, but we just want the periodical. So as we peruse through the results, the periodical is number eight on the list. So I receive some limited information here. There's the title, the publisher, the number of holdings that we have, and then where the red arrow is pointing, it says website 1870 volume one, and there's a blue web link next to it. So you can click on that link and it'll take you to a page where you can read the 1870 edition of the periodical or you can click on the item to view the full record in the catalog. So when we click on the item, we get all of the good descriptive bibliographic information. And then if we move down the page, we see the website indicator again. And then there at the top of the list is the link to the 1870 edition of the periodical that we saw previously, but there are also a lot of other links. So. This particular periodical is digitized from 1870 to 1923. So if you're looking for any of those editions, maybe you found a citation in Percy that fits within that time frame, you have the ability to view those for free from home. So I clicked on volume 38, and that was published in 1907. And this takes me right to the book and Internet Archive. So from there, I can explore all 778 pages of this one or if I'm looking for a specific periodical article, I can hunt for that. So going back to our entry in the catalog, and if we scroll even further down the page, this you'll see something that looks like this, and this is a list of our physical holdings for the item. So while the periodical is available digitally from 1870 to 1923, we have the periodical on our shelves from 1870 all the way up to the current year. So when you see those messages, second floor genealogy non-circulating, that'll indicate that it's something that we have here physically in our collection. That's just an example. And when you're perusing our catalog, be sure to keep an eye out for items that are digitized with that little website web link indicator and keep checking back because items are constantly being added. And Another good thing about our catalog is that there are a wide selection of search functions that you can use from simple keyword searches to Boolean searches and others. So I'll click advanced. At the very left here, it lists my recently viewed titles, which is convenient if you need to go back to something that you were previously looking at. But I decided to enter the words Poland and Catholic here. So it's kind of a Boolean search. So, and or not our Boolean operators. So if I wanted to do the opposite, I could change my search to do a ref search that reflects Poland, not Catholic or Poland or Catholic. 
So there are some options there. And at the bottom where the red arrow is pointing, there's a link that you can click for search tips and instructions. And there's some helpful information in there. So that's a good place to go for some more ideas about how to make the most of your searches in the catalog. So I did that search and I received 21 results. And the first book is The Latin Church and the Polish Commonwealth in 1772. And the second one is in Polish. So I'm not quite sure what that one relates to, but we can see from the subject headings that it relates to the Catholic Church in Poland and clergy. And these are the next couple of titles. There's Polish parish records of the Roman Catholic Church, their use and understanding in genealogical research. So lots of interesting titles to peruse and you can always use the filters at the left to further refine your search. That brings us close to the end. And I just wanted to mention a couple things. Again, be sure to connect with us on social media or check out YouTube if you're interested in our previous programs, like the previous videos that we have on Percy to go a little bit more in depth with that than, than we were able to today. Again, if you have a question, you're always welcome to click that link there in the middle and send us an email. So we're always glad to help. And then lastly, as sort of a recap, whether you visited before or you're planning to visit for the first time, scope out the, the catalog and the website to begin to prepare for your visit. And um, you can make a list of books and databases that you'd like to explore during your time here. Check out Percy and make notes of articles that you'd like to look at. Make a list of microfilm or microfiche. And you might want to schedule a consultation with a genealogy librarian if if you're or if you're coming with a group, you might be interested in in scheduling a tour of the department. So that brings us to the end. This is our contact information and all of the places where you can find us. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks so much, Kate. We actually do have a couple of questions. I must admit, I. I took one, the very first one that came in and answered it. And the person was asking, like, I don't live uh, near here. How can I schedule a consultation? Can I schedule one through Zoom? And I said, but of course, uh, they just send us an email and we will set up a mutually agreeable time. But we, we have Laura, uh, Kate, that says, how did Kate get to the listing of free databases? The page that says general resources, other countries, and then by state, um, mm -hmm. Can you go over that again? Yeah, let me um, share my screen here. So this is the main page of the website. And when you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this red button for our resources. So you can click on that. And that'll give you the full alphabetical listing of our databases. And if you're looking specifically for the free databases, you can filter by type and click free and that'll just give you the listing of those. Excellent. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Here comes a, a question that I expected, so I'm glad, Kate, that we're not disappointed. Um, uh, Denise asks, am I able to get a library card if I live out of state? So um, recently during Family History Month, we, um, we released a new genealogy card. So um, we would be glad to sign you up and get you one of those. So it, um, it'll it give you a an account number and a PIN, and that way you'll be able to log in and you can save your lists. Um, so that's a, a helpful helpful feature of, of the genealogy card. Um, our, our as far as our databases go, the, the licensed databases are only available here. So the library card or genealogy card would not offer remote access to those. Right, right. Very well stated, Kate. Thank you. Um, and just to reiterate what Kate said, um, it's a free card. So it's genealogy card uh, and you can um, make lists in the catalog. And sometimes those are really useful whether you're coming to visit us or not. So um, that, that's a real useful function of the genealogy card. But whether you have the genealogy card or the library card, our on-site databases are literally just that, on-site. So um, thanks for that. 
Uh, Meg asked, uh, can you tell a little more about the databases, Archive, Unbound, Civil War, and the War of 1812? Yeah, um, let's see. So, um, we do have a, I believe we have a previous program on our um, YouTube channel about the, um, I'll share my screen again, the Archives Unbound databases. So, let me find those. Yeah, so um, it they contain a little, um, kind of a little blurb about them. So about some of the collections, the um, Civil War has lots of histories and personal narratives. So I think um, I might not be able to speak as nope. articulately about those, but I would check our check out our youtube playlist and look for that previous program because that'll give you much more in-depth information about the materials that you can find and those that that i might not be able to offer as much information on so no it, you're exactly right uh kate um look for uh previous programs in our youtube channel uh, but the descriptions whether they're a little more robust or a little uh brief they're basically um more text and more history than they are actual records. So when we think of, we want to find, you know, all the Revolutionary War pension records or all the Civil War uh, letters and diaries. Well, it's not going to be all of them, but it's a nice compilation of records that help you get a better idea about what goes on or what went on, I should say, in the Civil War. And who knows, you may find your ancestor there. As same thing with the War of 1812. So they're a little more historical than lists of names, but they're a really nice compliment if you're on site to what you can find on, on Ancestry, which has more of the actual records that, that we traditionally look for. We know how important it is to context our, our research. So, so you were spot on, Kate. Um, Sherry, I think there's just a couple more questions. Uh, Sherry asks, do you have railroad records for Indiana, especially Elkhart area? We may. Um, we might have, if you know which railroad it was, we may have employment records. I know that we we have, I think we have a, um, some for a couple of railroads. Um, depending on the time period, um, you could look for pensions. The National Archives holds pensions, I believe, after the 1930s. Um, so that would be another source. Um, I'm not sure specifically for Elkhart. I would have to look at that to offer a more robust answer. Um, yeah. So, so th th this is a great opportunity, Kate, to remind all of our listeners that um, if you have a question, always feel free to send us an email. If you want a copy of the chat, if you have a question, send us an email at genealogy at acpl.info. And just as Kate was articulating, uh, look in our online catalog under Elkhart Railroads, under the name of the railroad, railroad company, just general Indiana railroads, all kinds of ways you can kind of play around in our online catalog to see what kind of search results you get. But yes, always feel free to send us a question and we'll be happy to happy to answer that question. And that, eight is another great lead into, I think, what is the final question? Um, how do you apply for a genealogy card? And I think you mentioned that in your answer. Uh, just send us an email uh, and say you're interested. We'll shoot back with a little few questions or two, and then we'll we'll get that process going for you. I think that really ends up all of our questions, Kate. So thank you very much, uh, Kate, thank for... You your presentation this afternoon and for getting us all kind of excited again about exploring the vast resources here at the Genealogy Center. And thank all of you for joining us. And please feel free to join us again on Thursday for another program. Look at genealogycenter.org for our complete list of programs for the next several weeks. Thanks again for joining us.